Hi guys, we're live at Camp Wisdom and we're testing out some Dutch oven cooking recipes and we're getting ready for the big reveal, so come take a look. What do we have here, Gretchen? The pineapple upside down cake. A moment of truth. Ah, Ooh. yummy. Look at that. It smells really good. That is delicious. Can you smell that at home? Mmm, they're missing out. Just a little scratch and sniff. So good. Well, we're going to let our experts slice a, a piece of this wonderful cake and we're, we're going to give you a view of what else we've been cooking today. Right. If you want to come this way. Or you want to take it? No, nope, You want to wash them slice? Let's okay. Show. Okay, hold on. What do we have here? <clears throat> this is from this morning. From earlier today. We've got, actually this is from just a little bit ago. This is our lasagna. This was fantastic. We just ate this for lunch. This is our breakfast casserole. Also fantastic. It's a uh, tough day out of the office today. It's a beautiful day and we're eating all sorts of food. Prepared by our master Dutch oven cookers. Yum. Chefs. Your slicing time. Getting close. Getting close to slice time. Okay. So we're gonna start this one. I'm especially excited for slice time because after is eat time. You want a plate? Okay. So our beauty shot, we want it sliced. Are you gonna Your shoot? Photographer some Garth okay. Dowling. I'm step. I'm okay. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Let's shoot some. All right. Before we elsewhere. slice. Like this. This oh, we're moving the cake. Be it's careful. Cake on the move. Be careful. I don't like how you're holding that. In case you're wondering, we're at Camp Wisdom here in Grand Prairie, Texas, and it's a beautiful day. We can do that one. Do you think this was hard to make? What's that? Was it hard to make in that Dutch oven? It looked, it looked easy. I, I thought it looked pretty easy. Not hard at, at least all. you made it look easy. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't do the cooking, well, so I can't judge. I'd say it's not hard, so. And what was your secret with that parchment paper? Uh, so we, we cut a parchment paper the size of the bottom of the oven, and then we put all of the brown sugar and the pineapple and all that good stuff on top, and then the cake, and then it baked, so that when it came out, the parchment paper kept all of that fruit together, kept all of the sugar together, and it, and it just came right out. Not it a problem. Delicious. It looks perfect. So this is Leslie Lovett. She's our, our head chef in charge today. You want to tell us a little bit about you and how you became a Dutch oven expert? Well, Steve and I cook with a, a Lone Star Dutch Oven Society. We've been cooking, what, for eight or nine years? And we just... Away, Steve. We yeah, this is Steve. Steve. This is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve's the Eagle Scout in the group. Um, and we just got together with a bunch of friends and, and just cooked whatever we wanted. We felt like, well, today we're gonna make chicken or whatever, and we all just get together and cook and teach each other and learn. And uh, so the trick is not burning something. So learning how to manage the temperature, learning how to manage the charcoal, that's really the hardest part. And once you figure that part out, you can do anything in a Dutch oven with charcoal outside. So when the power goes out, when the storm comes through, tornadoes, take care of the electricity or your power goes gone you can still cook your whole meal um, and we've done that several times so we just have a good time with it so so what's your signature dish well i'm from new mexico so i love anything with hatch green chili in it um, mm. and so i really like our sour cream chicken enchilada that's really good and um i guess that would be it uh, i also like to bake bread like you do um yeah. So we've been having fun making all kinds of bread, biscuits, uh, scones, just a lot of different things. So I like to put green chili in bread. Green chili and cheese, green chili and bacon. Green chili and apple pie. Green chili and apple pie. Mm, that's the best. Uh, so those are, those are all fun to cook. <clears throat> Y'all are fun. This has been fantastic. And it's funny, with as much as I've eaten today, I'm still hungry. <laughs> Especially after smelling this cake. See Garth working on some shots over there. 
our master photographer. That's Eric. Our art director. Is that your title these days, Eric? Uh, design director. Design director, thank you. Masterfully shooting for the upcoming Scouting Magazine. Oh, we've got a request, Leslie, for the enchilada recipe. Absolutely. That, I can I'll definitely get that to you. Is that something you have on your blog? Maybe we could, we could share a link to your blog. Uh, I would love that. Thank you. Uh, we do the Texas Iron Chef. We're not chefs, but we thought that was pretty cool to talk about um, uh, cooking with Camp Dutch ovens. That's the Texas Iron Chef. And uh, yeah, we have the recipe for the sour cream enchiladas on the blog, and I'll send you the link for that. Um, we did easy 7-Up biscuits that you would Ooh. love. Very easy. They, they turned out really well. We've done cakes. We've done bread. We've done quinoa. We've done all kinds of fun things. So yeah, Sounds good. Definitely send you that recipe. Tell us the story about so, you and your oh, Dutch yeah. oven when you were a scout. So is this is Dutch Steve oven. involved in this one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I was, I was a Boy Scout. We did our pack and paddle over at Sid Richardson. And I didn't really know any better, so I, I had a 10-inch Dutch oven and a water bucket. And I put my backpack on and carried that Dutch oven and water bucket all through the pack and paddle. I was a little lopsided when it was all said and done, because you don't go backpacking with cast iron, but I thought I could. So that was a long time ago. So learned a little bit. Learned, so. learned from that one, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, we've got staff from Camp Wisdom who just came over they're gonna help us with some of our leftovers today and um, hopefully who knows maybe they'll stick around and help us do the dishes no? Doubt it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish everybody at home could be here to help us with leftovers but uh, I guess I'll just have to do my part and eat as much as I can if I leave any for you that's true to eat, yes that's right, and I might just take care of that we'll take the rest back to Pedro Ooh, yeah Pedro did we make anything with alfalfa Oh, I think we left that off the menu. Steve, somebody's asking if there's a brand of Dutch oven that's better than the next. Do you, do you want to talk about that? Oh, um, well, I can get in trouble there. We use Lodge Dutch ovens. They're made in Tennessee. Their uh, their founder is in Tennessee. But Camp Chef Dutch ovens also are cast iron. They're they're cast in um, China, but they're they're still good quality uh, Dutch ovens. So Lodge or cast iron, I mean uh, Camp Chef, are both good Dutch ovens. Um, good quality stuff, um, either one. Yeah, we, yes. No, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, we, we, our go-to oven is a 12-inch oven because it's the same as a 9 by 13 casserole dish. So any recipe you have for a, like any kind of casserole will fit in that 9 by 13, I mean, uh, that 12-inch Dutch oven easily. So. Okay. Uh, Rachel, it is a pineapple upside-down cake. That is correct. If you guys are looking for any of the recipes, the pineapple upside down cake, the lasagna, the breakfast casserole, stay tuned for the September-October Scouting Magazine. Um, all of those recipes will find their way to your mailbox and you guys can test them out coming this fall. Um, and we'd love to hear from you. You know, hop on and share your favorite uh, recipes with us. Um, you know, it'd be great to try out something from the field too. So. And we will definitely share Leslie's enchilada recipe. We've yeah. had a few people request that. We're going to hatch chilies in season soon, right? In the fall. Okay. But you can get them frozen and canned. So, yeah. oh, we've got Roxy Mai saying hello from Taiwan watching us live. <laughs> Hi, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. Do you do any Dutch oven cooking over there? Love to see that. Yeah, that's cool. All right, Leslie, you're ready to slice and serve over here. Oh, it's slicing time. we got to get this one. Are you getting photos, Garth? You come around stepping this side. Let me know if I'm in your way. Just right where I was standing. Mm. I've got a tree in my way. I'll cut a slice and then yep, throw it right here. Plate. Yep. Now, Leslie and Steve have taught Dutch oven cooking classes at University of Scouting. Steve's an Eagle Scout. There you go. Any other scouting involvement? We've done work with the Girl Scouts. We've done some work with Girl Scouts. A lot of fun with them. Yeah, these mountain man rendezvous. What was the mountain mountain man rendezvous? rendezvous? Over at Sid Richardson. Uh, Very cool. New Year's, the weekend of New Year's Eve or somewhere in there. Oh, nice. Uh, a couple years back. Oh. Kathy, we wish we had smell of vision too. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe come next year, Facebook will release something. So good. Oh, it yeah. does smell good. Steve, you said your troop was we in Fort that, Worth, uh, outside of Fort Worth. Uh, West Fort Worth. Hi, James. Okay. I grew up west of Fort Worth. Cool. 
Look at that. There it is. There's a slice. Is it burned? No, it looks absolutely perfect. Lost a cherry. Do you want me to put it back on? Yes, please. Rescue the cherry at all costs. No. No cherry left Ian, I agree with you. This is brilliant. Right there. Turn it uh, counterclockwise. You're just tuning in. Trying to get some sunlight on it. We are live nice. here at Camp Wisdom in Grand Prairie, Texas. Maybe pull back towards you just a little, Leslie, so the cherries. Doing some Dutch oven cooking today. Our master chefs. Got Leslie and Steve. <laughs> it's looking, so delicious, I can't quit taking pictures. Looking at a pineapple upside down cake. Bring it into the light just a little more. Keep coming. There you go. Although we can't feed everyone, if you watch the upcoming September October Scouting Magazine, you'll get up close and personal pictures way. taken not, by not, our photography not, sorry, not, not quite that much. director, Garth and Dowling. Bring it back into the sunlight a little bit, a little more. In the recipe. I want to get that brown part right in the sunlight. So back towards, towards you just end. right there. Yeah. April, why won't they let you cook? Just need a little more practice, right? So Charles says he'd hate to wash that pan. It's what do you think about that? <laughs> Pans are easy to wash. It oh. comes right out. All right. The parchment in the bottom of the pan also kept the, the like gooey from just sticking in the pot. There you go. A little bit of water and a little bit of scrubbing and it all comes clean. I think we're good. All right. Jenny, everything right including the instructions for the coals will be included in the article. We're also going to have some have some videos to be uh, posted on our YouTube channel. Yeah, kind of on the side. Break up the blue a little bit. Okay. Gretchen's adding some accoutrement. Oh, that's nice. Really nice. One more, guy. Yeah. Okay. When can we eat this? <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little anxious here. Not until the fat photographer sings. Uh-oh. Kathy said the first time she went camping with her pack, she was in charge of washing the Dutch ovens and she used soap, but she knows better now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy. Salt. It just takes one time, doesn't it? Todd, I agree. It's awesome to see this many viewers. Hi, everybody. It's really not hard to clean up. Just a little hot water, just scrub it out with a little hot water and it should be ready to go for the next one. That's what a good seasoned uh, Dutch oven does. So they're easy to clean up. They shouldn't be hard. A April said that she burns the biscuits. Any uh, tips for that? That is why you need good temperature control. So most biscuits are baked at about 400 degrees. So depending on the size of your oven, you want to make sure that you have a ring of coals on the outside of the bottom of the oven so that if they're not clumped up in the middle, you want to spread them out and you want to have about a third on the bottom and two thirds on the top. And on the top, you'll have them all spread out on the ring of the, uh, uh, the lid of the oven so there's not a concentration of heat. And that is, yeah, and that'll help keep it from burning something. Yeah, I was going to okay. sure somebody <laughs> wasn't I with that me. knife. <laughs> you, you'll see some of this coal placement in our video and photos yes. coming up when the issue is posted. Tell so, us a little bit about what you keep in your Dutch oven while you're storing the oven. We store our, we want to make sure there's good ventilation in the oven so that it doesn't rust. So when you put the lid on the oven, it seals it up. So you need something that keeps the lid off of the top of the oven. So we put an old cotton clean, cotton sock with a piece of, uh, with a charcoal briquette in the, in the toe. And then we put the toe in the bottom of the oven and, and leave the, the top of the sock out of the oven. So it's kind of draped over mm -hmm. the top of it. And then we put the lid on it. And that gives it enough ventilation that it's not going to rust or get any condensation or, or mildew in there. So uh, a lot of people, um, they'll stack the, the oven on top of the lid. So the lid and the oven are together, but they're not, <clears throat> but one isn't on, the lid isn't on top of it. And that keeps it open, but then it's open for dirt to get in there so that's the way we start we had to ask her you know why we had a bunch of 
socks hanging over our cook table. <laughs> Looked a little bit like we were drying our laundry, but with charcoal in the toe. Yeah. yeah. We've got Ashley Tooley is asking if anybody's tried any gluten-free recipes. Have you done anything with that? Yeah, so any anything, literally any recipe, gluten-free, vegan, whatever it is that you want to do, if you can cook it at home, you can cook, cook it in a Camp Touch oven. There's nothing different about cooking with a Camp Touch oven other than the, the cold placement. So, um, you know, we've done cobblers. Or, or maybe they're a crisp, so an apple crisp, which is like an apple pie on the bottom, and then oatmeal and oat mixed on the top, so there's no flour in there, a um, little bit of butter, a little bit of sugar, um, maybe a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg in that, in that uh, sugar mixture, and then uh, you just sprinkle all that on top of the, of the crisp and that crisp up, and that, that's gluten-free. So you just do a search for a gluten-free recipe that you like, and then you adapt it for the Camp Dutch oven. Um, and like Steve said, I would start for a recipe that calls for a 9 by 12 baking dish. And that will fit in your 12 inch Camp Dutch oven. And so that's a good, always a good place to start. All right. We've got a comment from Bill. He said, there's nothing different except Dutch oven cooking is way better. Absolutely. It always tastes better. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Calorie free. Yeah, calorie, calorie free for sure. Well, and you get a workout, you know, moving all that cast iron around, you, yeah. get, you get a little bit of workout. So yeah, we're workout. definitely breaking a sweat here today. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is live, yep. Cool. Well, we'll have lots more instructions um, when it comes to the heat management and managing some of the coals, but mm -hmm. tell us a little bit, I know earlier you were talking about the ratio of heat on top of your dutch oven and on the bottom so so the general rule is one third of the charcoal is underneath and one third is on the two thirds is on the top and that's the way these ovens were designed is to to uh, move that temperature evenly throughout the oven to cook bake to bake it perfectly like mm -hmm. we did this cake mm -hmm. um, we had two thirds of the heat on the top and one third on the bottom you can find apps, and we're going to put a link to an app that tells you exactly how many charcoals, depending on the size of the oven. Mm -hmm. um, What's the name of the app? What's the name of it? Dutch Oven Helper. Okay. Dutch Oven Helper, the name of the app? Yeah. yeah. Dutch Oven Helper. Yeah, so check that out. And then if you, once you start baking and cooking enough, depending on the temperature and what's going on like today we couldn't ask for a better day for baking outside because there's no wind it's obviously not raining and so when we put the charcoal on there we know the heat's not going to be going anywhere but if it was windy and cold then we would have to adjust it we might have to add more heat or take mm -hmm. uh, today we actually had to take some of the heat off because it was in the sun and it's so warm we didn't need all of the charcoal on there so there's some art to this as well you have to adjust for the environment that you're in uh, so it really is all about temperature control. All right. Cool. Are we all, almost ready to eat a little of this I'll cake? Nope. I, we've got screen. we've got John. And nothing from, to see right, here. Right. Nothing to see. <laughs> we've got John from the Philippines tuning in. Welcome, John. Hey, John. Scoop of ice cream on top of that. Yeah. Can I do that out here? Yeah. Yeah. Dig in. Oh, here you go. Smile for Garth, everyone. I'm gonna take the first bite. Oh, here we go. Let's see, Let's see the reaction. Mmm. Perfection. No. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Does it have notes of pineapple? It does. Keep Pairs well with lasagna. Cooking television. <laughs> Who brought the ice cream? <laughs> That's what I said. We need ice cream next time. We will have all the recipes on our website later and uh, we'll have video as well. It's all part of the September October Scouting Magazine, so it'll it'll be up. It'll be up, just keep watching. You can expect it about mid-August, usually about August 15th. So keep watching the website, scoutingmagazine.org, um, and you know, stay tuned. The recipes will be in your mailbox as soon as the magazines um, reach you, which are usually around August 15th. You know, Tim, Tim says it's tough to do ice cream in a Dutch oven, but from what I hear, that's actually not true. That's not true. We can do ice cream in a Dutch oven. We put the ice in the in the bottom of the Dutch oven, in the ice cream, I mean in the ice, and twirl it a little bit, stir it up, and it, you can get it, you can get it solid. You can make it solid. Here you go, Tim. In fact, the only thing that you can do, that you can't do at home, in your oven, that you can do in a Camp Dutch oven, is to make ice cream. Hmm. You throw dry ice at it and it all works.
Right now we have 161 people viewing. Awesome. <laughs> Hello. We've got Ray. Ray just said, if you can cook it in your kitchen at home, you can cook it in the field in your Dutch oven, which Absolutely. is exactly what Leslie was saying Absolutely. just a minute ago. That is the most important thing we want to reinforce. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to go get some plates okay. and some forks. It's time to... To take our own bite, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I think we're gonna we're all gonna eat here. So have a great day.